All right, guys, today we are going to do the carburetor on a Generac 196cc motor. Um, this one is on a pressure washer, Generac 2800 PSI uh, pressure washer. Um, some of them are on snow blowers or go karts or, you know, this, that, and the other things. Um, ST168F, I guess, is the model. Sticker for the pressure washer model and stuff. Can't really see it. There we go. Um, all the parts that we'll use will be in the description below. Uh, just click on the link, you'll be able to get to it very easily. Um, make sure uh, um, you hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button if this helps you in any way, shape, or form. All right, first, we're going to take this wing nut off, pop this air filter cover off upside down makes a good nut and bolt holder so you don't lose anything take this wing nut off and take the uh, air filter cut uh, air filter itself off that air filter will be in the description below as well pull that off um, you see gas is dripping that's how we know it's carburetor um, I just spray something in there, fires up, shuts back off. That means it's a fuel issue. You know it's carburetor. Um, if it doesn't fire up and shut off, check your spark plug. Check your oil. Make sure you're full of oil. Um, pull the spark plug out. Is it soaking wet? If it's soaking wet, dry it. Dry, uh, put a new plug in it. Anything like that. Um, push both these this way. This is full choke. This is fuel off. But to get this to slide off, you need them both this way. And then it's a 10 millimeter, two nuts. Take them off. I believe there's another one up here too. Yeah. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt up there. Take that off. Let's just pull straight out. Got a gasket right here. Comes off. Um, fuel line clamp. We're going to remove that. A pair of pliers. I got a little bent over, well, long bent over needle nose. I use the heck out of these things in this in this business. Like that see, like right here is a use. I use it for leverage to pry it up a little bit, break that fuel line free. I'm gonna need both hands for that guy. Um, if it's not breaking free, you can twist it back and forth, and it, it'll give. If you try to force it, you'll break the line, and then you'll have to take the tank off. See, I just. Wiggle it back and forth. There we go. All right. Let me get that back on a little bit. Here, let me turn this off. I drain the first bottle's worth of gas out into a, a bottle. Um, this way I can see what they uh, put in there. If it was uh, water or bad gas, um, you can see what's going on in there. Um, just dry out a good, you know, in an old water bottle or a Gatorade bottle or something like that. And just let it run out until it's full. You can set it to the side. And the water, if it mixed in the gas because the ethanol will, will settle to the bottom. This is looking like old gas. Gas isn't supposed to be yellow like that. It's kind of a clear blue color, unless it's high octane. And you shouldn't use high octane in small equipment. So that's old gas. They could have put new gas in there and just had such rotten old gas in the in the uh, and. Uh, gas tank that it made all of it look like that um, but that's old gas I don't see any water there's nothing settling to the bottom so dispose of this properly um, the local auto parts store or whatever and then when you're done draining it all out blow everything out in there make sure that it's completely dry in there make sure there's no water I blew it out with air if you have to take a rag shove it halfway down in there leave some out and just let it sit there and it'll it'll soak up all the gas and stuff and you pull it out ring it out shove it halfway back down in there again and let it soak up until there's nothing in the bottom of this because you don't any water or you know there's like some surface rust down in there but it's not coming out it's just surface rust anyways but uh any of the water and debris oh, look there's a little puddle still in there no no that's dry 
Yeah, so any of the any water in there and you're gonna get it right into your carburetor and it's not gonna work again and you're gonna be like, What's no, what's wrong with it now? Alright, so now we're gonna pull this out. You see how it straightens this throttle out? There's a slot up top. So we're going to pull this cable. We're gonna bend it in a little bit and then pull it straight up. easier with two hands so it comes straight out of there you gotta you gotta kind of bend it you know just twist it and pop it up type of deal um, then you got a spring that's got to come off you set that off to the side we're gonna pull this off this is the good stuff this is where we get into it oh the choke arm get that off because if that falls off and you drop it and you lose it then it's you know cry cry all right 10 millimeter. Oh, and everything comes out. Just keep an eye on it. Look for beads. If there's beads, that's water. And you really got to make sure you get all the water out of your tank. All right, 10 millimeter. Take this one right here off. So there's some surface rust that had washed up. So you really want to get it cleaned out as best as you can from the gas tank because that's what was probably what was messing this up. Um, Pull this pin out. It'll float directly out. It's got a needle valve built into it. You see all that dirt? All that's got to get cleaned up. All that dirt has to get cleaned up. See the jet? Got dirt all up in it. That's the issue right there. Um, take this idle screw out. Phillips head or a flathead. And underneath where that idle screw was, we got this. Oh, pry it up, pops right out. That is a jet. See there's brass in it. That is an idle circuit jet. Right. Now we got to get this jet out right here. Take a number two flathead screwdriver and I grind the sides down so that it fits inside of here. Because a normal screwdriver won't. And if you go with a smaller one, you're just going to strip the brass. So with both hands, hold this carb, push this down in, get it set into the slot, and firmly push it down and turn it to where it's you know really push down and give a quick jerk if it doesn't break free you can do the acid that i'm going to show you here in a minute in it and blow it out with the carb cleaner like i'm doing it outside it just works a lot better when it's outside to get it clean but you can clean it with the acid inside of this um you just got to be very thorough and keep rinsing almost use a whole can of carb cleaner just to make sure everything's you know fully cleaned out you get this out and we use very little card cleaner. Mine wouldn't come out. And instead of stripping it more and getting a bunch of shards of brass down in there, we're just going to leave it alone. But if you get it out, it's a little jet. You can set it down on a table and clean it out. No big deal. Whatever. We'll get it clean anyways. This is my trick. This is a trick that I know. I don't think any other small engine shop uses this. I've tried all the, the acids. This is 14 karat gold testing acid. Testing solution. I'll put it in the link below. But it takes very little. Wear vinyl gloves with this. If you get this in your eyes, rinse with water immediately. Consult a physician if you have to. Um, to get on your skin, rinse it out with water immediately. Um, and you'll be fine. You don't have to go to a position it'll turn your skin orange for like a week and then the orange skin will just start to peel off it's not a big deal your eyes though make sure you rinse it out real good quick um it, 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 wear safety glasses wear vinyl gloves all right so we're gonna put i can do like 50 carburetors with this bottle just so you know so put like a couple of drops of acid Directly down in three drops should be sufficient. 
right down into it. You see it's just eating all that gook right off of it. Same with this little jet here. See how dirty it looks? One drop on it. Sinks in there. Boom. Starts bubbling all that mud out of there. And then this guy, you roll it over. And we've got this spot right here. Two drops in there. Two drops in there. Let that start boiling out. I'll just give it a little bit. Just let it boil out. You know, 30 seconds or so. Do not get any in here. I know it's brass, but it'll etch it, and then the needle valve will no, never seal on it properly. All right, we're going to rinse slowly so that we don't get any splash back. This instantly dilutes it. All right, then we're going to go hard here you get splash back if you get this in your eyes it's gonna burn like crazy hell and you're gonna think you're gonna be blind for the rest of your life it just hurts once it's done evaporating it stops hurting um, I get into my eyes all the time now it doesn't even bother me anymore but um, spray hard through here spray hard through here spray hard through both of these spots all right so then you just rinse everything else out you see that jet's nice and shiny in there, nice and shiny in here. Don't use any other acids. I've tried all of them. I've tried mixing my own. Some of them eat the brass out. Some of them melt the aluminum. Some of them don't do anything at all. This is the best one. I've tried all of them. It gets nice and shiny. Oh, no, I didn't even rinse that one out. Oh, shit. i rinse that out. There you go. Nice and clean. Rinse off all this real well. All the bowl inside here. Rinse all the other parts out really well. You got all this cleaned off. A little bit of staining is okay. Just you want the big chunks out of it. Um, the needle I leave right on there. I'll hold in place and I'll rub in circular motion on my pants. And that'll just clean that rubber tip right on off. Uh, make sure you sprayed through here really well, cleaned all that out. We're going to slide that right back down in place. Clean pin. Slide this. Once we get all this kind of assembled too, we're going to rinse it one more time just to make sure there's no dust or dirt inside of this. We're going to get that, that down into place right there. Right, and then uh, clean the bowl out really good. We're going to put this butt back on the drain bolt on the opposite side of the petcock. This bolt right here usually has some crud on the bottom of it. Just scrub it on your pants and wipe it nice and clean. Put it in there, 10 millimeter, tighten it down. We're going to put the idle circuit back in. It's got a flat spot on it. You look where it goes on the carb. That's where the flat spot goes. Push it all the way in tight. Screw the idle screw in until the aluminum is at in the halfway spot. Just like that. All right, now we're going to go ahead and slide this back on. You make sure you've got the gasket in between. Um, again, parts will be in the description. Carburetor, gaskets, air filters, acid. Everything will be in the description below that you'll need for this job. So slide it on slightly. And we're going to work our way over here. We're going to put the spring on first into this little hole. Like that. It's got to have tension on it. It's got to be connected up back here. Like that. Alright. Then we're going to work this thing up and around. Bring this carburetor in a little bit. Look, it just dropped right in. Where it goes. I don't know why it wouldn't come out that easy. But there you go. Alright. That's in place. Now we're going to hook our fuel line up. Pair of needle nose pliers. Where'd they go? Oh. Grab this fuel line, shove it on the carb. Let me use both hands to get that all the way on. Then uh, grab the clip, 
Put it on. Bam. All right, that's done. That's done. This gasket goes on. It's important to have that gasket on. See the uh, little opening goes up this way. Boom. Then we're going to put this on. This tube pulled right out of the air filter assembly. No big deal. We're going to slide it right on. In place. Oh, wait. Pull it back off. We forgot something. Choke. Choke on. Make sure it's working. All right, now put this on. Oh, make sure the fuel is off. Put this on. All right, that's on. It's going to be the two 10 millimeter nuts and the 10 millimeter bolt. Pop all them in, get them tightened down. Make sure you push this hose back into place and pop right in. That's just a uh, crankcase ventilation. Any fog that comes from the oil kind of, you know, uh, vaporizing will get sucked right up into the engine, burn out, and uh, it'll be less damaging to the, uh, you know, it's like a California emission thing, whatever. Tighten it all down. Oil, make sure it's full. Oh, shoot. See, it's way over full. We have to drain this oil off. It's full of gas from where that carburetor was leaking before. And we got to put fresh new oil on it. And uh, you fill it just till it's right full to the top. That's where it goes. Full gas in it. Don't run it too long because it has to have water in the pump to run it or it'll overheat the pump and chew it up. But just fire it up, see if it works. All right now we're going to put the uh, air filter back on it. The little metal wing nut on top of that. Plastic cover on it. Wing nut on that. You're ready to go. I'm going to go and water pressure test this and make sure these are all the way ready to go. But that's how you uh, clean out the carburetor on your uh, Generac pressure washer or 160, was it 169 cc? 196 cc Generac motor on whatever you got, snowblower or whatever. Um, this helped you out in any way, shape, or form. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'll put all the parts in the description below. Acid. Brand new carburetor, filters, everything. Oh. Um, and uh, today's t-shirt will be in the description below as well. If you want to do any advertising through my channel, message me. I'll be more than happy to have you. Peace.